All right, we have just passed our eighth week. So we're in week nine now of a 16 week course. Our last week is just final exams. So we're more than halfway through. And if we look at our homepage and we look at our first day stuff, going back almost nine weeks ago, we had a metaphor to start the class, right? So this metaphor is of an American Ninja Warrior course. And you have worked with your group members to try to put a presentation together for today. You've handled a whole lot of new information that I've asked you to just have faith and you'll get more comfortable with it as we go, learning about raster imaging, learning about compositing, just getting introduced to vector imaging. So the midterm advice here is to pay attention to each step, right? And so there's lots of little components that happen now this week, our midterm week. And then I'm gonna warn you, after this week, this is the hardest part in the semester for all of your classes, right? Because this is when we start to expect the most from you. And we need to have you demonstrate all of your abilities individually in order to earn the credit. So just like in an American Ninja Warrior course, it's about 70% of the way through people start getting exhausted and dropping. And what I want you to know is that that's a choice you make, but you will not fail if you don't give up. You really won't. You just have to fight through it, ask for the help you need. We're, all the supports on campus are here to help you. I'm here to help you. Your group members are here to help you. And then if you can get through that, you don't need to be intimidated by our final exam and our final critique and our final presentation and all that stuff because you'll already have gone through something similar like today's midterm presentations and you'll have built those skills for yourselves. So really this midterm and each step, think of it as like powering up your skills in this material so that you can take the hardest part of the semester. Again, not just this class, every college class is like this and you can feel empowered and confident even though it's not gonna be easy, right? Easy doesn't teach us much. So in order to embrace that challenge, this is our course outline for this week. Today, we're turning in our first vector project, which has three components. It is your refined sketch, which hopefully you already have posted in assignment four. That was your, your chosen sketch from Proving Ground 2 that you made into black shapes, right? It can be very loose looking, but it gives you a plan for tracing your vector. The second requirement is a PNG file of your black vector shapes. PNG because it has to be rasterized to be able to go onto canvas. And PNG so that it doesn't have a background. So that could be used on a website, could be used on a business card in all the ways a vector can be laid out. But I also wanna show you how to save a vector format for yourself so that you can make that logo any size you want from one file. And I'll be reviewing that this morning. Then we're going to be doing um, or choosing our logo and making it print ready. And two other artworks from the class so far, right? That could be exercises, that could be proving grounds, that can be assignments. But the third requirement for assignment four is we're gonna add color to that black logo. So you'll have to choose if you wanna print your black logo or your color variation. And adding color variations is very easy as long as you like your black logo, right? Because the black logo gives you the shape, the color is just an added feature to that identity, which is a good way to do logo design because the most flexible, versatile, usable version of, a, of an iconic picture-based logo is a black shape, right? And then if you fill it in with granite or with polished metal or with crimson red or with a drop shadow and a rainbow, it's still always gonna be that clear shape that communicates first. So that's the goal. All right, we also have our group presentations, and then we're gonna do review for our midterm exam, which is next class. So printing, everyone will need to have three prints for next class. So I'm gonna go through how to do that once we finished our logo. And I'm going to print them for you in the back of the room, but I want all of you to know how to set them up for printing. It doesn't make sense to teach you how our printer works. It makes sense to teach you how all printing works, right? So we're making things print ready. And then I'll deal with the specifics for P800 printers, which are now discontinued anyway. And, and all of the, the paper and ink needs. You'll just have to trust me on that, right? But knowing how to make something print ready will work for any printer anywhere, right? To get the best quality. All right, so let's get started.
So we're going to go to our assignment four. And so far in this project, we've done quite a bit. This is our Adobe section. So we finished up our black logo and we saved it as an AI file, as an SVG, and as an EPS, but I'm gonna review that with you. <clears throat> and for those of you doing the freeware, there has been a change in the freeware where we can no longer save it for free without paying for it um, as a vector format. So instead, if you're using the freeware, the vector.com, I want you to just save it as a JPEG. So I'll demonstrate that as well, even though most of you are in Illustrator. All right, so if we go to the assignment, let's see, this will be video 13. So we've been working a while on this. We can shortcut to it by going to assignments off the homepage, scroll down to assignment four and where we post. And again, since the deadline is tonight, make sure you have something in for your, for your efforts, even if it's just your refined sketch. That, so far, that's the only requirement I've posted, right? The refined sketch. So now I'm going to go to my folder, and I'm going to find assignment four, and I'm going to find my AI file. My AI file will automatically open in Adobe Illustrator if I have Adobe Illustrator. If I don't have Adobe Illustrator, my AI file won't open in anything else, right? It's specific. And I'm going to remind you how you can save it in those different formats out of Illustrator once you're happy with your black shape logo. What, what happened? Huh, that's weird. Now, Adobe just had its big launch event for all its 2025 products. So your Adobe 2024 might soon become Adobe 2025, which might mean that your settings are a little bit different, but there aren't substantial you know, changes that make it so what you've done before doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, we're gonna look at the layers. And I'm going to use the large selection tool here, the black, to select it all. Why is it quitting? Ignore. I think it's because it's opening with 2025 instead of 2024. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now select all of these shapes and before I save it as a vector format with my large selection tool, I'm going to drag it off to the gray. Let me unlock these components. Drag it onto the gray background. Huh. There we go. Okay. To make sure there's no white in the logo. Remember, this is all black shapes. So even though I have these different parts of my logo or my symbol on different layers and they're showing up with different colors here, they don't have any white shapes at all. The second thing you do, can do to be sure is go up to Object and Path and then Outline Stroke. So if any of you used any strokes, you need to turn those into outlines, which means a fill path before you do anything else. And so your finished project should look like this. It should have an empty stroke when it's all selected. So if you click and drag it off onto the gray, all you see are black shapes. Okay, now I have to drag it back onto the artboard because as an SVG format, the most standard kind of vector format, it's only gonna remember what's in the artboard. Think of this as kind of your cropping space. So now I can save it. First, I say file, save, to save it as the AI file. All right. Next, I go to file, save a copy, just like out of Photoshop but this time I'm gonna change the format to SVG, the one at the, broad, the bottom. This stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. It's the oldest form. I'm gonna replace the one I saved in the last video because they're the same. It doesn't matter where on the artboard it is as long as it's on the artboard. It doesn't matter how big it is on the screen as long as it's on the artboard, the vectors are captured. The next, I'm gonna say file, save a copy, and I'm gonna save it as Illustrator's Adobe version of a transferable file, which is my favorite for clients, and it's called an EPS. And again, it's gonna copy the one I already have. That's all good. And keep all the defaults. All right, now, now I can close Illustrator. 
I'm not going to quit it. I'm just going to minimize it. Okay. Now, if you are using vector.com, the freeware, which is very helpful to practice, and you log in and you go to your designs, right? You'll find the vector you were working on, but let me get there for you. I am going to open a file, and the kind of file I can open into vector.com to work on is the SVG file. So I need to go to my desktop, I need to go to my folder, I need to go to assignment four, and I need to find my SVG. So when I do that, this vector format, like I said, the most common, oh, that's not it, most common vector format will open up. It is, yeah, not that one, it is this one. Let me mark that with a color. Let's do purple. So I'm gonna say open file in vector.com. Find that purple one that I just saved, that SVG out of Illustrator. And this really messed it up, but that's what freeware can do sometimes. But this is a vector, but it comes in as a vector group, which is why it's kind of messed up. So what you can do is you can save your, or export your vector if you created it in vector.com as a JPEG, but make sure, this is the important part, make sure that your pixel width is at least 3000. Now, what I don't want you to do is bring your SVG from Illustrator into Vector.com. You see that that doesn't work very well. That's why we have different kind of transferable formats. But if you create it in Vector, export it at 3,000 pixels per inch. And I'm going to show you what you can do with that then. It goes into your downloads folder. So this is my very weird looking logo, but I'm going to show you how we can now turn this into a vector. So if you create it in vector.com, you download it as a JPEG at 3000 pixels per inch, looking at front row here, because it applies to you. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to open that with Adobe Illustrator. Okay. It comes in as a pixel format because that's what a JPEG is, right? But this is another great skill of Illustrator. It has vectorizing tools. So I'm going to hold down, just like we did with our sketch initially, I'm going to hold down Shift to lock its proportions and Option to shrink it from the middle after clicking on it. And I'm going to fit the image on the artboard. Once the image is fit on the artboard, this is a new version of Illustrator. So I need to hide this bar because I don't, I don't like it, even though that's a helpful tool right there. What we're going to do is called image trace, and you're going to find that under properties. This is only when you need to vectorize a raster image, right? And it works best when it's black on a white background. So now I'm going to click on image trace. And we're going to do this with the next project as well if you want to do your line art in something like Photoshop. And then I'm going to choose black and white logo. So you guys with me? Because I have it at a high resolution, it's going to give me this say, this warning, just say don't show again. Okay, now I don't want to try the new gradient tool in. Now you can see I have image trace and it says black and white. And if I zoom in, it is now no longer pixel based, it is a vector. But I want to be able to control these settings because it has a white background. And I don't want a white background. I just want black vector shapes. So I need to go to the, the options here next to black and white. And I need to open up the advanced options for image trace. I need to do the drop down menu for advanced. And then you're going to click on ignore color. What that does is it gets rid of the white so that now you have a vector it's not there yet, but now it's previewing a vector for you on a gray background. And the last step is once you're happy with your settings and how your vector looks, you hit expand. And now that turns it into individual vector shapes, which if you use the small selection tool, you can see the anchor points. 
So it's a lot of steps 